Hi everybody, Will Alexander from Will Alexander's Dog Show Tips. Brought to you by Canine Chronicle Television and ProPlan, Nutrition That Performs. Today on the interview chair we have Mr. Thomas Bradley III, Mr. Westminster himself. I'm sure it'll be enjoyable. Hi, everybody. Today we have Mr. Thomas Bradley III. How are you, Tom? I'm doing great, Will. Thanks. It's a beautiful day here. Well, it's good to see you. It looks beautiful there, for sure. Well, let's get right at it. Tell me how you got involved in dogs, Tom. Well, uh, it's an easy, it, that's an easy answer. My father, my father answered it for me. People said to him, how did your son get involved in all these dogs? And he said, it's my fault. If I only knew what one little horse would have cost me. So that's it. No horse, but I settled for a dog, and that started the whole thing. What, what breed did you start with, Tom? German Short Hairs. Okay. Yep, 1954. Yeah. How old were you then? 14. 14. Wow. Just a kid. <laughs> <laughs> well, how, tell me how you got involved in the sport then. Well, uh, we had a we had a uh, a local kennel club starting, and um, that I, I I signed up to become a member. I was I was thirteen or fourteen years old. I didn't really know what a kennel club was or what they did, uh, but we had what I called dog shows, which were really matches, trying to get recognized by the kennel club to become a you know a regular dog show, and uh, one of the people. Uh, you'll appreciate this story. One of the people who came to our match was a Mrs. Betty Hislip from Brockville, Ontario. You know, Betty, Betty lives within an hour of me, but people, people don't understand that. But you and I understand it. One side of the border or the other. Uh, and so one of the first shows that I went to were uh, Canadian Save the Children Fund in oh. Ottawa. And save, yeah. And uh, I was, I was there. I had to get a friend to take me because I couldn't drive yet. I was fifteen, and uh, she pulled in in one of her blue station wagons and were screaming Karen Terriers and and uh, kind of parked near me. And finally, she came over and she said, "Could you help me? Could you boys help me show these dogs?" And we said, "Well, no, we really don't." know how to do that oh just she said i just got too many you have to help so we said okay and uh so she bought us lunch <laughs> and that was that was the beginning of a friendship that lasted all of all of uh all of her life really to the end and uh she was she really uh in in later that year she came my parents had a house at the thousand island club on wellesley island and she came to uh have dinner there with her, one of her bows and uh so my mother said, that woman's wa waving at you. I said, what woman's waving at me? I don't know. That woman over there with the red hair. I said, I oh, that's the dog lady from Canada. <laughs> so she said to me, are you going to go to Westchester? And I said, well, I'd like to, but uh, I don't have any way to get you. Don't you worry, dear. I'll pick you up. And that what started. Wow. So, so I, she, she's, the, she's, the, she's, the, she's the one who... who uh, they actually introduced me to a lot of people and pushed me a little bit to do better. Wow, I didn't realize Betty had that. I knew you, I knew you were very close. I didn't know yeah. you had that much of an impact at the beginning. That's that's yeah. Something. Well, you know, I I often say, uh, Will, that uh, Betty was very nice to Jim Reynolds and myself because Jim was showing dogs in those days, and we were both able to uh, be her extra non-costing non handlers because she always had two or three class dogs, two or three class bitches, and Lord knows how many specials. Why so many specials? Well, I'm not quite sure what color they want, so we would take them all. <laughs> so that was you guys showed on both sides of the border helping Betty then? Uh, yeah, sure. Oh, yeah. Right. Indeed. When did you meet Jim then? Uh, that's a that's a tougher one. Jim was still showing Scotty, so I don't know what year it was. I, I don't really remember, but that goes on to uh, way too many, too, way too long stories. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. <clears throat> so where did it go from there? Why you? How long did you? How did the German short hair do? 
Well, he finished, and uh, it, it wasn't an easy tra it wasn't an easy road, but uh, that's all it took. And uh, I, he he wasn't a great one, but he was he was a decent one, and uh, he finished. And uh, then one short hair leads to another. Really, after that, I little bit I got somewhat involved in in field trials. We had a, and we started a local trimmer short hair club. In those days, there were nine short hair clubs in New York State alone. We each held specialty shows. We each had field trials spring and fall. Nowadays, I think there may be two, maybe three tops. Um, hard to find field trial grounds today, and anywhere you are. But but uh, that would introduce me to another, you know, a little a little different world of of. Uh, of dogs, but uh, but I continue with that, and we, we I had some partners. We bred short hairs for quite a while, and and uh, one thing leads to another. Short hair led to an English cocker, led to a pointer, <laughs> led to a Labrador. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I want to keep going with this though. So you had the short hair, and then the pointers. When did because we know how fame how how impactful you were with the pointers when you first started with mike michael showing the dogs and can you go into that for me sure um actually the um you start if you want to go at the beginning and that's even better i don't care <laughs> okay I'll, I'll tell you how i got to pointers the uh, uh i wanted an english cocker and so i shopped around and found a lady in michigan and uh so she had a wonderful blue roan dog and and uh so i bought him and, pardon me what did you find in michigan uh you're pushing me <laughs> maple Lawn, his name was maple on silver sovereign her name was jean Green glass jean glass yeah yeah and uh so i took one look at this hairy beast and said i don't know anything about hair i've only had german short hair pointers so I found uh, Karen uh, Prickett Miller, and uh, Karen and Mickey and I became very, very close friends for for many years. It was, uh, and uh, she she showed him, and he was never one ever one English cocker, but he was ranked right up there. And and uh, a quick story is that they called me up one Christmas and said, um, "We have a Christmas present for you, but it's here, and you've got to come to." When you come to Detroit in March, you can have to come see. So I did, and and I went out, and uh, when I, we went out into the kennel, and there were or in the, maybe in the yard, there were a bunch of four, five, six month old Springers charging around. And she said, wow. "Which one do you like best?" And I said, "That black and white one right there." And she jumped up and down and said, "Mickey, he found him. He found him." Well, <laughs> that turned out to be Lou John Black Label, who was there. Top winning <laughs> Springer for, and as far as uh, especially shows for many years until uh, till we stopped with him. I and he, Jack, his name we called him Jack, and he and I were were the closest of friends. It was interesting to see that kind of relationship. I would only see him maybe a half a dozen times a year, but the first time I saw him, he was a baby. We were in, in Virginia, and. Uh, a girl came into the hotel room and he, he was just he was just a baby i mean seven six seven eight months old and he growled at her and uh mickey pricked him up and sh shook him you know picked him up behind the uh, by the neck and the, the tail and shook him and said we don't do that and and really shook him hard and he, and uh, put him down and he looked around and i said come here jack and he sit, came next to me and i put my arm around him i said you stay with me i'll protect you the rest of your life and and to that day, I would go out, and they would meet me at the airport, and Jack would come in, in the van, and by the time before I got to open the door, the van was rocking back and forth, and he, and we had that kind of relationship for a long time, and I called called Karen up one day, uh, you're going to get me emotional now, <laughs> and uh, okay. I said, just, just, checking in on, just checking on you, see how things are going. She said, I was going to call you this morning. And I said, you are? Why? And she said, we lost Jack last night. Uh, and so who knows what, 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 what led me to make that call, but I'm glad it did. And he was a wonderful dog. Wow, that was a good story. And then uh, from there you went with, after this car. Well, oh, that's how we got to, sorry, that's how we got to Pointers. Yeah. She was showing a dog for a young couple in Lexington. And um, it was the humble acre dog, uh, and she said, "I want you to look at this dog." 
and uh, he's I've done a little wedding with him, and I said, so I said, well, he's a nice pointer. And I said, I don't think he's a great one, but he's a nice one. And uh, how much did they pay for him? And I, she told me, and I said, well, they got their money's worth. This is going to be a nice dog. Next time I saw him, he went best and breed of Westminster. And we went, oh, my, this is, are you sure he went best and breed of Westminster? Well, long story short, he also won the National Specialty and won the breed of Westminster the following year. Listen, I will tell you the first to tell you, it was not a great dog, but he was a great attitude dog. He would stand in the middle of the ring, play show dog all day long, and this was in the early 70s. Half of them were crawling around on their bellies with tails tucked. So uh, that's what made him a better show dog, I guess. There we go. What, now, what dog was that? Umbilacre Sandstorm. Okay. He won this national in 1976. Uh, Under right. Jack Rementer <laughs> with Gene Ellis marching up and down outside the ring. <laughs> I'll say no more. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I remember I first met you, I think I was, I was visiting Mr. Eldridge when I first met you. Right. I think so, too. I remember that, yeah. One of my very, very favorite people. Oh, mine too. Right. Yeah, and and really one of the reasons I'm I'm still in this was still in the sport as long as I was. I think. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I was just a kid, but he sure had a big impact on me. So. Yeah, he was. I, I, I was so fond of him, and he had such a wonderful way about him, and a way about way about breeding dogs and livestock. He was, he was, was kind of like my friend Bob Whaley. He was a breeder. They bred chickens and they bred goats and they bred cows and, and they happened to breed damn good dogs. That yeah, was amazing. Sorry, you got off topic there a bit. I'm sorry. <laughs> so we're okay. on, we're on to pointers. Yep. Well, okay, so that led to the pointer. And uh, so I said to him, well, who are this young couple that have this dog? Well, they can't afford to show him. And I said, well, maybe we should become partners. And that, that, that led to my first pointer. And uh, uh, that led to a lot of other pointers. <laughs> then we went and uh, I, I was able to uh, get a, a, a two dogs from Erica. Eric McCurley in those days, and um, that started my 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 breeding. We didn't use Sandstorm much of a, as a stud dog, only once or twice. But um, uh, and then uh, we ended up with uh, Opulence, or we called her Opal, and Opal uh, was leased by Mrs. Robeson and Michael for, to be uh, Bee's mother. Oh wow! Okay, so that's where we started from then. Yeah, well, that part started. Nice. Yep. How did she? Do? So she was B's mother, and that was um. Gosh. How did, was Opal shown as well? Oh yes, she 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 won a group under uh, Roy Roy Holloway a couple and uh, once some, she wasn't she hated dog shows, but uh, Michael Zolo showed her in those days, and and uh, he, he I said, how'd you get her to do that? that he said, I almost lost her halfway down. I reached down and punched her. I said, don't you do that. And she behaved herself and stood up and won the group. <laughs> Little tricks of the trade. <laughs> Tell me, um, okay, so now Michael's on the scene. When, when you got Bees, did you know when Bees was born, did you know that who was she, what she was going to turn into? I'm sorry? When, when Bees was whelped, when you, when you, when you, when you whelped Bees, did you realize yes. who she was going to be? Okay, I did not whelp her. Mike whelped her. Okay. Uh, Mr. Uh, he, he was, she was bred, as you know, to deputy, and uh, and he whelped her, and he whelped both litters actually. And uh, uh, she was bred to deputy again the second time. But you you were on it, weren't you on his breeder as well? Yes, because I uh, yes I I when I leased her to Mrs. Robeson, uh, Michael and I both stayed on as co-owners. Okay. Therefore, uh, breeders, yeah. But I did not ask. Uh, I didn't. I didn't welfare. Okay. But when you when you were were you involved in her campaign? No. Not at all. No. no. Very not well. really. <laughs> Mrs. Robes, Mrs. Robeson ran her own ship. Oh. <laughs> 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 now that now that now that the days are over with, I can tell you another story. We uh, the second litter produced a dog called 
Wolf Nassib Booker T. Washington. American. And a uh, big black and white dog. And he won two five point, uh, won a big uh, sweep, uh, sweepstakes or uh, futurity, and then won two five point majors. And Mrs. Robeson said to Michael, why isn't my kennel name on that dog? Well, he said, you know, Mrs. Robeson, you just leased the, leased the bitch for a year. And, uh, well, I really want my name on her. And he said, well, I think I can take care of that, Mrs. Robeson. And so he was, the dog was re-registered as Abelarm Lufnas of Booker T. Booker T won three five-point majors and finished with five five-point majors. <laughs> <laughs> oh my those days you did okay. strange fortunately i didn't know about it till afterwards <laughs> long afterwards when did you first start with westminster tom i was a member thanks to mr eldridge uh, uh 1975 or six ted and ted nominated me and and introduced me to uh, the club and then uh i you know then i I be uh, my years are not very good. Will I forget what time, what year we did this? But then I became. Eventually, uh, Chet Collier came to me and said, uh, "How would you be interested in running the PR?" And I said, "Well, you know, I've never done anything like that." And I said, "He said, he said you'll be fine." And I said, "Okay." So I I uh, I took over the PR and did that for seven or eight years maybe and then uh when chet was retiring he said to me uh, uh i want you to be the show chairman and i said okay and so i did that for 16 years and retired did you have some good stories about those years oh my <laughs> we haven't got all we haven't got anywhere near enough time for those stories <laughs> Not even one or two. <laughs> uh, well, they were. It was. It was. They were. You know, I. I. I, I had had a, had. I had experience running shows, and I use that word in quotes, because sometime in the earlier seventies, uh, the Stevensons took me under their wing, and and uh, I got to go to Judge of Santa Barbara quite a few times, and then they asked me if I would be the show chairman. And I said, well, you know, I can't. I live in Watertown, New York. I can't be there. And they said, you can. And they really, being the show chairman of Santa Barbara in those days was kind of being like head of the cleanup crew. I mean, the, every, the Stevensons did everything. I mean, in detail. And that was Tom Stevenson. That's where I learned how to run dog shows. Detail, detail, detail. And no detail is too small not to pay attention to. And uh, that was a great lesson for me. I would, I would fly out along with a whole bunch of a num number of people. I mean, Jim and Ann Clark, uh, uh, Dick and John, uh, Frank Sabella, uh, and we would all meet there in in, uh, in Santa Barbara and spend the week putting on putting on the dog show with the Stevensons. And it was it was a great experience. Not only that part of it, but. The, the Stevenses didn't have a dining room. They had a big kitchen table. And let me tell you, those dinners were, were a, a lesson that, that uh, no one could, could ever duplicate. From people from judges from all over the world to, to just day-to-day uh, -day people who were of interest to, to the sport. But you, 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 you learned a lot. You learned a lot. Yeah. Oh, wow, that'd be incredible. Well, what do you think is... Um Let's get right down. What, what's your favorite breed, Tom? No, no way. And no, you know, you know, <laughs> still working. Oh my goodness, my favorite breed. All right, let me think about this for a little bit. Um, okay, my favorite breed is alphabetically uh, greyhounds, labradors, pointers, and uh, whippets. Okay, I didn't realize the sighthound part of it. Wow. Well, I've had a couple of whippets and a greyhound. Yeah, I didn't realize that. What about mentors? I know we talked about Benny. And we even talked about Mister E. What other mentors do you have in your in your sport, in your life in the sport? Oh boy, that list is long too. Um, some of these people will be familiar names to people on this who listen to this program, and some not. Bob Whaley uh, was the the master breeder of field trial pointers. Uh, my my uh, 
house where I am right now in Henderson is a half a mile from uh, what was his what was his home, and uh, they, it's it's now a, a twenty five hundred acre state park. Um, Bob Whaley bred the L. Hugh field trial pointers in there. They won more national field trial championships than, and I'm talking American field, not American kennel club, um, than anybody else. And he was, he was, some, he, he, like, like Ted Eldridge was a breeder. He bred the, he bred the first horse to win a million dollars in New York state, a horse called win. Now he sold him as a youngster because he didn't, he didn't like the people at the track. But he liked to breed horses, and he bred fancy chickens, and this, it's it's endless. And uh, but he was he was a very very close friend for for many years, and a, and a very dear friend, and and uh, taught me a lot. His, his attitude about people in this sport was out, was 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 um, invaluable. I have to say that. You know? So uh, Ted, as we said, Len Brumby. Lynn Brumby ran the AKC judges program for those days and uh, was, uh, did it, of course, from my opinion, <laughs> did, did, it, did it exactly correctly. The only thing I didn't ever do, what he told me to do, was, was, was go for another group. And I just had sporting dogs, and that's all I really wanted to judge. But he would you say, uh, Mr. Brumby, I'd like to apply for some more breeds. Or he'd call you up and say, it's time for you to supply, apply for some more breeds. And this is who you, what you should apply for. And I clearly remember uh, doing Cockers, uh, Brittany's, Plumbers, and Springers. He said, you can't do Cockers and Springers at the same time. And I said, oh, come on, be all right. So I applied. Well, I didn't get Springers the first time. <laughs> you did what he told you to do. I learned my lesson quickly. Uh, and he was, he, he, he took young people like myself in the sport and real and seriously took, took you under his wing and, and guided you. And, uh, I don't think it's, I know that Mr. Biven and I have this conversation frequently and we both feel exactly the same way about it. He was, he was, he was a wonderful, wonderful dog man. Uh, of course, as I said, the Stevensons, I mean, Ann Stevenson called me up in April of 1975 and said, uh, I need you to stand by, dear, to judge Clumbers because it's the day after the national specialty and I don't think our judge is going to be able to do it. And I said, well, that's fine. You just tell me what you want. She said, I want you to do those six dogs at the end of the day. And I said, six dogs at the end of the day. But, 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 but oh, yeah, sure. Well, I said, I'd love to do the best in show for you, Ann, but I'm not approved by the kennel club. And she said, yes, you are. I said, no, I'm not. And, I, and she said, as of yesterday afternoon, you were approved by the board to judge the group. Therefore, you are uh, eligible to do best in show. And I said, me. If that could be true, but I'm certainly not best not doing best in show at Santa Barbara when uh, uh, when I've never even judged a sporting group. And she said, "Yes, you are," <laughs> and I did. So I had never judged a sporting group, but I did best in show at Santa Barbara. There were four thousand dogs. It was an, it also was a lifetime experience. I can tell you who all six of them were too. But do I get into that? <laughs> oh, I'm over here. Who were they? <laughs> well, the, this, I'm gonna, now you're going to push me. The, yep. the, uh, the sporting dog was a dog called Champion Renzfeld Newsflash, owned by, shown by his owner, <coughs> which is the The line. Uh, the hound now is escaping me, but it'll come back. The, uh, oh, no, maybe I know. The working, working dog, there wasn't a hurdy grip. The working dog. No, I can't do it, Will. I used to be able to rattle them right off. And, uh, what did you um, get Mr. Show to? I, I, uh, uh, Mr. Green was there with a, with a uh, Norwich Terrier that uh, I think was just too special. I think it was a Norwich. Now I can't remember if Norwich or Norfolk. But uh, uh, it was one of Ruthie Cooper's, and the dog that did a lot, a lot of winning. Uh, the non-sporting was, was a... Uh, Kiss Me Kate, the standard poodle oh, wow. from the Midwest somewhere. Uh, he was a beauty. The hound? Oh, gosh, I couldn't, if I had my, had, had my list in front of me, I could point it out. But uh, 
Oh, the, and the palm was, was uh, Susie Fisher showing uh, a palm for Lady Conyers from uh, Bermuda. And uh, I guess I'm getting most of, most of them. Well. Oh, oh, no, the working dog, I remember, was a nine-year-old Siberian husky. And that wasn't who was supposed to be there. It was supposed to be uh, a Doberman, and I don't remember which one, but that was the big winner of the day. And, and uh, the poor hounds got left out. I don't remember who it was. And it was, <laughs> it was a lot of fun, I'll tell you. And the worst part is I had, I had no idea how long I'd been out there. And so I went to one of the exhibits, actually went to Kiss Me Kate, and I bent down in front of her and took her front in my, in my hands and turned my wrist and looked, looked at my watch because I didn't want to just go, well, what time is it? So I found out it was time. It was time to end. So uh, Mrs. Clark afterwards said, why did you do that? And I said, drove you crazy, didn't it? And she said, yes, it did. <laughs> Mrs. Clark was not one of her fans. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, yeah, Tom and Ann, any other mentors come to mind? Oh, uh, that, that pretty much, I think that pretty much, that, well, other than Chet, of course, and that, that kind of goes without saying. On a personal level, I, I want to know a little more about Mr. E. Uh, he, he, I was invited to, uh, well, no, first time I met him, I was showing uh, German short ear pointers at Westchester, 1964, maybe, 65, along in there. And I had a, I was given, you know, in those days, uh, it, it, well, I was given a short hair. Uh, and she happened to be the, the top bitch in the country the year before, but the people who owned her uh, were, couldn't, were, moving south to the shooting area and when she was not a gun dog and they had other dogs to take and tom crow got her for me tom crow said to me i, I want to talk to you one day and and he had shown dogs for them and, and uh their name was andrews and so he he, he would you be interested and uh, he came to see me the next day and he said i can he said can you come see me and i went to see him and he said i've spoken to mr and mrs andrews they're going to ship the dog to you next week and she was the she was in her dog her she was her name was Champion Wage Sheba Bruner. She was she was white with liver spots, and uh, which was somewhat unusual in those days. And we used to say that came from Swedish blood, but actually that the white um, has always been in the breed, more so today now. Uh, and she did a lot of winning. But Ted gave her the breed over over. Uh, Robin Crest Chip, who was the, one of the top sporting dogs in the country. And uh, actually, that's not, yes, that's true. But he also gave her the breed up in Vermont in the New England circuit before before that. And uh, so, uh, and he, uh, we, we, he, uh, so that introduced, that's what really introduced us. And we, I was on the, uh, I was a delegate those days, and I was on the nominating committee for maybe officers for the year, whatever the nominating committee did. And I went to Travelda for the first time. And uh, so uh, uh, he said, come come a day or two early. And I, I did, and we did a lot of Irish setter talks. And I mean, I was, it was, it's, it's, I've never had the breed, uh, but it certainly is, is one of my very favorite breeds. And, you know, uh, my biggest, I think the biggest honor I have in judging is I was invited to have been invited to do their national four times. And, uh, I, I loved, I love the breed. I love judging the breed and oh, yeah. in, in retiring. It's one of the things I really miss and not a chance to walk back in the ring with a bunch of red dogs. And I, I always, always love showing Iris Sanders to you. I, I could tell yeah. you what you liked. I thought I did anyway. So well, you did. <laughs> it was pretty easy. It was pretty obvious what I liked. <laughs> so when, you, when you were on the panel for Irish Setters, it seemed like the Irish Setter world came to life to to be there to see you. So yeah, it was fun. I got I uh, one of one of the one of, I judged bitches one year in uh, in uh, California, I think, and and. Uh, uh, I gave winners. I, I awarded winners' pitch to uh, the 
she might have been a 12 to 18. She might have also been a bred by. I'm not sure what class she came out of. And great whooping, hollering. And uh, then I gave reserve to her litter sister, apparently. And there were like 200 bitches, you know. And I didn't have any idea who these who these who these two were or anything else, but that brought the house down. And I kept saying, people were weeping and crying, <laughs> jumping up and down. I said, what, what's going on? Well, they're sisters, they're sisters. <laughs> and I was right. Mine was the producer and the open, the reserve was the, was, uh, was the winner. She went on to be the top Irish setter more than, more than once, a couple of years. Beautiful bitch, beautiful bitches, both of them. So where are you going to go from here? So you're retired now. You still have dogs. I still have dogs. And uh, I have a 15, 14 and a half year old young border terrier bitch living here. And um, oh, yeah, so. You have borders yet. Border, yeah. Well, I'm, that's, that's another long story. <laughs> Years ago, I bought, a, I bought a, a walking stick from Dennis. Dennis, who who did bronze work, he was a terrier handler from the state what from from the state of what Dennis Dennis Springer Springer yes yeah I started to say I knew it was I knew it wasn't sprung but I knew it was pretty close <laughs> and, uh, and and I don't know why I bought one but uh, so here I am fourteen and a half years later with with uh, this this monster who lives with me and controls my life. Well, I um, Love that breed. It's a wonderful They're a wonderful breed, but I, I, I uh, again, I don't do hair, so um, <laughs> I don't know what I'll do next. I have no idea. I'm guessing probably black. Yeah. Some black dog. <laughs> black dog. Oh, that's so. Do we have an idea what breed it is then? You obviously do. <laughs> yeah, I would think a Labrador. Yeah, I love, I love that. I have black labs myself, too. They're a wonderful breed. Actually, I am showing a couple dogs right now. Actually, four. four well, almost four. Uh, I have we have two pointers out with with uh, bred by, and fortunately, uh, I've been able to co-own them with uh, Dennis Brown and and Katie. And uh, black and white bitch has done really well. She won Florida and uh, AKC show, and she won Westminster, and she's had a best in show and a bunch of reserves, and she's just just growing up now now that she can't go to dog shows very often <laughs> but she'll be back and she'll do fine and uh uh many years ago jim smith and i became friends jim smith who lived near buffalo and a master breeder of smooth fox terriers and uh, I, I was, uh, we were good friends we were not let's have dinner friends but we were good friends and after he passed and i i uh, called up Dana Gable, who, who uh, is, is his, was his partner, and, uh, and said, you know, if, if I'm looking for a smooth bitch to have, maybe when, after the border terrier goes. And she said, one thing led to another, why don't you have, why don't you who, uh, co-own Chuck with me? And I said, that's fine, who's Chuck? And she said, well, Chuck's the number one smooth in the country. <laughs> I said, "Oh, that's kind of interesting." I don't. I, I was just thinking for a pet, and and uh, oh, you should do this. It'll be a lot of fun. And I said, "Okay." So Chuck ended up the year last year as number one. Last year, at two is number one, and uh, he's he's uh, in the stud dog ranks now. And so all of a sudden, I got this picture of of, uh, of a bitch, and she was five months old. And I said, "Oh, who's this?" And she said, "Well, this is." Uh, absolutely smitten and i said what a great name uh yeah sure um, so uh, smitten is now being shown she's she's finished and she she's doing very well she has some head group placements in this this last go round of shows recently and now she, today she's in kansas for god's sakes but mm -hmm. that's where you go to go to dog shows okay, the show is any thoughts on uh, today's um 
current judging process, Tom? Well, you know, I think I, I think I alluded to your question earlier um, a little bit. I think the way that uh, Len Brumby taught us to do it, come along slowly and, you know, give you three or four breeds at a time, get your feet wet, get to know breeders, get to know, uh, you know, I think, I think uh, I'm, I'm not ashamed to say that I judged judge particular breeds differently when I ended than when I did when I started. Uh, you, you learn you learn by going to specialties, by talking to uh, talking to breeders, and, and uh, I think that's uh, one of the one of the breeds that, that it's, I certainly judged entirely differently uh, than, than when I started judging them. For Labradors, and uh, uh, we were, we were, my partner Peter Souch and I were very, suc very successful and somewhat successful in. Well, we, we were, <laughs> we were the number two breeder in the in the, in the club, in the parent club, the second year we ever bred Labrad Labradors. But that was all kind of a by mistake because the Labrador ladies knew me well enough by then, and they let me have a good bitch, and and uh, they kind of guided me as to where she should be bred and. and she finished and so it's it's uh it, it was it was pure happenstance that we uh, became we were we were more, more surprised than they were i think to be the number two breeder in the country but but i think that uh, uh it's a breed that when you're into uh, into it it, it you, you it, it's so natural for, for me uh, i did the boston specialty one year and and uh norman grenier uh, there were, i had 20 some in the Open, open black class, and I finally got through placing them. And Norman was in second place, and uh, <clears throat> he was shaking his head as I went by and said, "But Bradley strikes again." So you know me, you know me. I got puffy. I'm, what do you mean by that? He said, "Arnold daughter, Arnold daughter, Arnold daughter, Arnold daughter." Well. Dick and Doll Arnold was my very favorite stud dog. And for me to pick four of his daughters was not a surprise, but well, it was a surprise. I'm glad I did it. But, uh, you know, it, it, that's the kind of eye where your eye goes, I think, is being correct. Any advice for up and coming judges then, Tom? Well, I think, uh, I guess the best advice I, I think, and, and, and and, and maybe uh, maybe this is an 80 year old speaking but keep your eyes open and your mouth shut <laughs> just listen listen to people listen to what they're saying listen to people who have more experience than you do and uh, and uh, uh ask questions but uh, uh that's i think that's don't think just because you've got a uh, after your name says judge of of xyz breed that you know all about them because you don't and uh, you really need to to uh, speak to people and talk to people and learn it's a continual learning process if, if you don't learn every day then uh, you're not doing a very good job uh, is there a dog out there you wish you could have been a, a part of <laughs> you ask me these easy questions all the time <laughs> One of my favorite dogs that I wish I had been a part of uh, was Champion Vidmelka's Rolls Royce, uh, Silver Shadow, known as Royce. Okay. Uh, Michael Michael Scott showed him for Pat Trotter, and and uh, he was he it was more he was a wonderful dog. He had he was a wonderful elk hound. But he was a wonderful character, and uh, I think that uh, if if I, that's what I would base it on. Not not maybe his. He was a great dog, but his, he also was a great character. He uh, he would sleep with me <laughs> when we traveled together, and uh, uh, he was he was he always knew I was around, and there, and uh, made lots of racket, lots of noise, and and. Uh, but he was a—he uh, was just a—he uh, was a great all-round dog. I loved him. Okay, one well, one last question then, Tom. Okay, you could give advice to the twenty-year-old Thomas Bradley the third. What would you give? Uh, what advice would you give him? <sighs> if, 
I'm sorry, here. Um, if I could give myself advice if I was only 20 year old, 20, 20 year old, that, that'd be the same advice. Shut your mouth and open your eyes and open your ears and listen. I think that's, that's, uh, um, that's the best advice I could give anybody. But pay attention to the professionals, the professionals in the sport. You know more than, more than most people. We're amateurs at one day. They just learned. They learned by watching. They learned by listening. They learned by working with somebody who was better than as a as an apprentice, and uh, and that's it. Not don't just want to run around the ring and show your dog and one and call yourself a professional and wonder why you're not winning because uh, you, you you you're just a good amateur. That's all. But uh, I think to th this sport. This sport it depends a lot on history, and uh, it depends on a lot on. on I think this prob this sport for me has more kind people who are willing to help than probably any other sport in the, in the on, that we that we know about. Uh, uh, it's and it's always it's always it's usually almost always the the top guy. Who's more more than willing, but you got to ask. That's uh, that's me, I guess. You're right. Uh, over uh, myself, growing up, I used to ask a ton of questions, and I can't remember anybody saying no to my questions. They always that's right. Me. That's right. But you 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 knew enough to know you didn't have all the answers, which is part of the problem today. Um. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. I really appreciate the time you gave us today. It was really great to see you, and I, I hope we get to see you soon somewhere. I'm stuck up here for now, but <laughs> thank you very much. It was a real pleasure. I'm glad it did this well. I, I was a little apprehensive, but this was this was fun, and it's a great day. I'm glad to share whatever little bit I have. No, thank no, you much. Definitely fun to see you. Thank you, Tom. Bye. Thank you, Tom, for inviting us into your home today for an incredible interview. Uh, if you like what we're doing here, make sure you press the like, share, and subscribe button. And don't forget, if you want to send me any messages or talk to me or even tell me to go away, you can do it at dogshowtips at gmail.com. Uh, yeah, or if you just want to look into Will's world, go to willalexander.net. Until next interview chair, talk to you soon. Bye-bye.